Hello, I'm Dr. Sally Tribuco, a Senior Manager in Franchise Development at Foundation Medicine. I'm joined today by Dr. Andrew Evans, Associate Director for Clinical Services and Director of the Lymphoma Program at Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey and Medical Director of the Oncology Service Line at RWJ Barnabas Health. Hi, Andy. Hi, Sally. Good to be here. At this year's American Society of Hematology annual meeting, Rutgers and Foundation Medicine presented research exploring genomic differences across B-cell lymphomas through the lens of patient genomic ancestry. Andy, from your perspective, what is the importance of a study like this? There are many important aspects. While precision medicine is helping to advance cancer care, without intentional planning and implementation, it also has the potential to unintentionally deepen existing health disparities. There are many disparities in cancer related to race or ethnicity. Different racial or ethnic populations experience increased incidence of specific cancers. And we also know that there are worse outcomes and survival for particular cancers based on race and ethnicity. Factors like disproportionate inclusion in clinical trials across groups or un- underrepresentation in genomic databases in part via decreased access that drive forward research pose a threat of keeping certain groups from benefiting from precision medicine research as much as others. Studies like this are important because they have the potential to increase understanding of cancer biology and unique risk factors across genomic ancestry, leading to more inclusive research in general, and especially in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, where there is a relative lack of this work. But these studies aren't possible without collaboration. At last year's annual ASH meeting, Rutgers Cancer Institute and Foundation Medicine team members had several meetings and identified a shared passion for this research and started to map out a plan of how best to collaborate together. Sally, this research used Foundation Medicine's robust database to answer a few key questions about B-cell lymphomas, which are the most common overarching subtype of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And as you know, have significant clinical pathologic heterogeneity. That's right. Foundation Medicine used our large research data set of real-world patient comprehensive genomic profiling results to find data on a diverse group of patients with B-cell lymphomas. Using machine learning, we predicted patients' genomic ancestry and examined whether certain subtypes of B-cell lymphoma were more common in some ancestry groups than others. We also explored imbalances in some genomic alterations known to be relevant in B-cell lymphomas across ancestry groups. Ultimately, we found multiple differences across ancestry groups, showing that specific subtypes and certain genomic alterations in this cancer may be more prevalent in some ancestry groups than others. Andy, what do you think of the future implications of this research might be? Yeah, there are many. By showing that specific subtypes and genomic alterations in B-cell lymphomas can be more common in ancestry groups compared with others, we showed genomic differences by ancestry have important differences across patients with this cancer. For example, we identified CUX1 alterations, which may be associated with response to treatment with PI3 kinase inhibitors, were more common in patients of African ancestry who had diffuse large B-cell lymphoma or B-cell ALL compared with other ancestry groups. This suggests researchers should proactively include patients of African ancestry in clinical trials, studying PI3 kinase inhibitors in these cancer types. Exactly. And conversely, we found that EZH2 alterations in follicular lymphoma, for which there is an FDA-approved therapy, were similarly common across all ancestry groups studied. Findings like this suggest that if some patients aren't getting genomic sequencing, there's a risk they could miss out on effective treatment options identified based on their genomic alterations. If we as a medical and research community don't work to make sure all patients are getting next generation sequencing, we not only risk missing the opportunity to match patients to the right treatments now, we also risk driving forward research that doesn't reflect important genomic nuances across patient ancestry groups. That's right but there's still a lot of work to be done. While we hope studies like this will help to better understand cancer disparities and mitigate increases in disparity as precision medicine research advances, increased understanding of differences across genomic ancestry groups is just one part of the puzzle. Progress requires commitment to inclusive research, improved access to care, accessible education across the oncology community, and collaboration. And with ongoing collaboration, we can work toward a future that enables true, individualized precision medicine for all of our patients.